Global TV says certain kind of friend we no keep And some informal friend we love like We ain't global Bona fear friend and bona tape We ain't global We no promote them We no support them Look at them on a cheek come here represent for We ain't global TV Check it The offense The retirement The new appointment But no withdrawal of the offensive letter, neither a public apology. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening on another of your Drive Time London Lunchtime Glow Brawler program. Good evening to everyone on the X, to everyone on the Twitch, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Good evening and welcome. Good evening to all my family members. Good evening to my community of parity. Good evening to subscribers and membership holders. Good evening to everyone on the live. Good evening to everyone on the chat. Miss Colleen Love is your new clerk of the house. Yes, she has got a chat record in there but will they be able to do their job without interference one could ask given the current circumstances of our parliament simone beckford good evening and welcome good evening debbie jervis noreen dennison good evening and welcome Patricia Matthews, good evening and welcome. Michelle Lewis Wilson, good evening. Brenda Elson, good evening and welcome. Arja Robinson, good evening and welcome. Sunshine, good evening. How are you? Patricia Matthews, good evening. Good evening. Norman Ferguson, good evening. Annie Smith, good evening. EM, good evening. Good evening, all, and welcome. Thank you all for joining us. Do you think they are hearing us? Or even if they're hearing the nation, are they really listening? The opposition has 
recalled for public apology and the retraction of Juliet Holness's letter. But is Juliet Holness the Prime Minister and those of the Jamaica Labour Party really listening to what the public wants? Are they really hearing what the public wants? And if they, if they are hearing, do they really care? If there's no form of dialogue, no form of information, how will they be able to show us that they care? I hope the new clerk will be able to work with integrity in a swelter of what has become a political tit for tat between family members. But I promise you that I wanted to play for you a protest in Barbados recently to do with land issue. Let us listen to it. It's over 10 minutes of video, but it's worth listening to. And then we'll come back. You know, seriously, because this thing's going on in my head and too many people and some of the people I believe to be credible. But I can't take credi credibility without the documents. I want the documents. So if you got some documents, bring them for me. Just like the people at Bra, they were telling me things for months. And I said, but no, you're going to give me the documents. Somebody opened my mouth and think I don't get sued. So when they produce the, they produce the documents, they come with all kinds of excuses. I want documents. So if there are documents that suggest a relationship between the owner of this property and any connection to the people who give him permission, because they understand that the new, uh, they call it Planning and Development Act, the minister is the person who gives permission here. Not the chief town planner. Yeah. So if that is the case, who is the minister? The minister, the prime minister. You know, she got almost all the ministries herself. So that's what I'm saying. That if that is a fact, we need to see the documents. The prime minister needs to come out and clear her name because there's too many things going on. Too many people saying things, and I hope that it is not true. I would like to believe that she's still honourable. <laughs> but they call her that in the house, they call her Honorable Prime Minister. So I want her to be made honorable. And I want her to clear her name. I want her to come out and say, she ever called me and not tell me nothing. Tell the public. Have one of these um Robin Shoulders or St. Joseph's Peaks or whatever. Do what you want to do. But come out and talk to the people who elected you. Remember that the, the Ben Friendel was here, the Friendel wasn't talking. And the people hold that against Frandall. Now she talked all over the place, but the important things she are talking about. We want to hear you on these important issues. These issues that will make or break Barbados. We want the Prime Minister to come out and answer these questions. The people of St. Joseph, particularly, but the people of Barbados generally, because I remember coming down here, they told me when they showed night, you know, like you know, when it was courting, you know, you've got to impress the young ladies, you know, and I grumbled my way down here, so I had this old car man and did wonders. So I I got I got clear rights down here too. You know? That, you know, I have to shut off this place, I can cry. You know, just like the Caribbean, when they say the Caribbean hotel pushed down, I, I I was in pain because that was my place. Young man live home. So trust me, you need to ask questions. And if they don't answer your questions, we know St. Joseph is the place that vote for the Barbers, the party St. Joseph, St. Thomas, and Christ Church West. It, don't vote for them. Alright? So I know we know we go cut back a lot, so I can't talk and I talk too much. But so I gotta cut off now. So that other people will get in. Okay, so um, I think Kimar is supposed to come up here, Kimar. Okay, come over. So, um, and I'll get back to my soup.
Good evening, Barbadians. Good evening. I am very happy to see you all this evening in St. Joseph. Um, this is a proud moment for me. Seeing Barbadians stand up the way they are standing up in these times. They like to say that we are passive people, but today does not show facility. No. Today reveals the spirit of Bussa and reveals the spirit of our traditional ancestors who would have stood yeah. with us when we were going through the torment from the colonizers. Yeah. And today we have another colonizer coming in from Australia. Australia. <laughs> because we don't like to acknowledge that Australia is indeed property of the crown. And we will bring colonizers, whatever color they are, to take over the rights, the birth rights of Barbadians. Will we sell it for pittance? For people who do not have a care in the world, literally. They're pretending to be good at mass. They're pretending to be good at English. But they're really, really, really pretending to care about the people. This shows a pretense. The selling off of all of Barbados really shows the pretense of the misleader that we have for a leader. Because someone who stood in the center of this country and spoke about black people and black rights, knowing that we live in a black country, but it will not break down to risk because even white people use this spot. So this is about all of us, all races, all colors, all classes, all creeds, to let someone know who didn't even care enough to add to the next generation, but would rather sell it off because they want elevation to another beyond. But I will say to you, my people, that where we can't see the Lord sees, and the Lord will drag them all out in the open for us to observe the dwindling of their quality of life, the dwindling of their personal wealth, and the dwindling of any taxpayer's money they stole. They will not enjoy it in the name of the people of Barbados. This country belongs to us. It will continue to belong to us. And we will get rid of any prime minister who think they can step in front of the people of Barbados who put you there thinking that you have a right to be a dictator in this country. We were never a dictatorship. This is never a communist country. It will never be a communist country. And I say to any prime minister who wants to turn this country into a communist country, I bet you not. It will never, ever, ever happen as long as I got breath. As long as all of you people here, even the ones who are not here, have breath, and we have the right to vote, and the right to protest, and the right to civil disobedience, we reserve all rights as Barbadians, as this country belongs to us, and the time of the colonizer and the whole slave is over. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. This land belongs to who? It belongs to we. And we are letting the Indians, no white people, nobody come in here and take this from we. Our ancestors bled and died and sacrificed their life for us to be right here on this bridge talking how we talking. We can't turn our backs on them, right? And they don't care what Mia said. Barbados belong to Barbadians. Black Barbadians at that. Rastafari. Good afternoon, my people. Let me say this that I am touched by the, the, the number of people and the, the people came from all different parishes to represent this cause. And let me remind you that we do have an issue with certain things happening in this country. But some people seem to be 
uh, shying away from the fact that Barbados is not 11 parishes or should not be divided into 11 parishes. I have a problem with this St. Joseph speak, St. Lucy speak. Barbados is too small. We are Barbadians and we should be able to speak to any development going on within the confines of the coastal regions of Barbados. We should speak about Barbados. I don't, we are here and I, I'm sure the police, the journalists, everybody here, they come, they are Barbadians. Our children are Barbadians. They go to school all over Barbados. They have investment all over Barbados. And they should be able to speak about any issue going on in Barbados. If we allow ourselves to be constrained into just talking about where you live, when you go to town, what happens? When you go to St. Philip, what happens? You cannot say anything. You have to wait till that speaks. I don't believe in that. I am happy to see eternal here. I'm happy to see that people take a stand. And this is not any political uh, intention here. I'm just saying that the way how we enjoy this now, that we need to be mindful of the fact that we should be enjoying this a lifetime in this country. Okay. What you do here, I would like you all to come back again and do the same thing. Bring your family. Come and enjoy this. Because as I, as I have chosen Bathsheba to be my homeland of all the other parishes, I want you all to come and enjoy the sweetness of Bathsheba. And I keep saying it all the time because this development here, when I say this development, I don't mean, I talk about the natural, the natural beauty of Bathsheba, the natural beauty of George River. It's something that is only a part. It's only a part of this whole line, you know. It's only a part of this whole line. This may be one end, but there's another end. So we in Bathsheba, con we consider this as a continuing experience. And we are not willing to lose any part of it. If you come out here mornings like 5 o'clock, so I say 5 o'clock, but let's say 6 o'clock. And you have that sweet breeze, that freshness, and that, in, you know, that invigorating uh, spirit. You would understand what I'm talking about. And I want you all to come back and have picnics. Listen, we are Barbados, we need to enjoy Barbados, you know. There are people who come in and see what we have. But you know what happened? They don't want to share anymore. They want to own it. And if we, if we don't, you know, there's a saying, there's a Latin phrase, I care. But it says, if we don't like what we have, somebody else will like it. And that's exactly what's happening. Because we, when we shy away from our beaches, we shy away from, because of our concerns, yes, we are trying. We are trying, you know, working hard and trying to get some money and trying to do certain things in order to enjoy a quality life. But what is the sense of doing all this hard right here and there? The life gone. It don't make sense. It don't make any sense at all. So I want you all to, you know, enjoy the finer things in life. Don't let people come and put a wellness center. For wellness center for people overseas. And you all need the wellness. wellness. You know, that, that, these are the kind of things I'm not going to speak about. Um, all of the different technical aspects now. But I will say this. Any development in this country should deal and address the laws relating to development and the laws that we all have to observe. We are happy to have investment, but we don't want the breaking and the, the, the mandatory uh, changing of these laws to suit certain people. Then we are there fighting, fighting to cut off the city house because we go going over two feet. We trying to paint the house, we put it in, in, in wood because we can't put in the wall because somebody said we can't put in the wall. And we are fighting with little niggy niggy issues. But yes, somebody coming and doing some big things and getting away. What, what are we saying to ourselves? We are not given a break. And I 
other people are taking, taking the whole hog. And they cannot get away with it. I'm saying development should, should respect the laws. And everybody will hear, policemen, your family too, oh, everybody will hear and have that problem. When y'all come to the forum, when y'all come to do a building and do it, we will be asking questions. Why? And I'm saying to you, this area, it belongs to Bashiba. It will remain Bashiba. It will remain for the people of Barbados. We as we are just custodians of this area. You all come down here. When COVID, when COVID is on, my wife will tell you, we can get down here. We can get down here. Not here. We can get down the beaches. Uh, the people they follow all over the Florida. You know they had a number. They had about what, 15 a group. We can get down here. Man, those people come down here before us and we just live two houses away. You know what I'm saying? People they know it. They enjoy it. It is lovely. Let's let's enjoy this place, man. Don't let the body take it away. Right? So look, I plead with you as a representative of one of the residents, probably one of the nearest resident here to, to this area, to let us let us fight for our heritage. And let's enjoy it. Thank you very much. Oops, sorry, sorry. I keep turning off my audio when I play the thing and keep forgetting to turn it on. Sorry about that, my people. Good evening, Norman Ferguson. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, Annie Smith, E.M. Pamela McNeil, Rosie, D, uh, Rosie Dale, Daly, rather. Shauna Smith, Angela 48349, Hey Lines, good evening and welcome. Thank you all for sticking out. It, it, it is important that we encourage our people to stand up. It is very important. I'm, I'm sure you're hearing me now. It is very important that we encourage our people to stand up. It's the only solution we have to tyrannical regime. It's the only solution we have to dictatorial regime. I am not happy with the way Jamaica... You're hearing me now, aren't you? Are you hearing me now? Okay. It's worrying how Jamaica has gone into silent with so much going on around us with crime, corruption in government, issues to do with our land, you know, the influx of um, recent Chinese migration with the contracts um, Jamaica have with... Um, company like Shrek and all of that. It really doesn't provide an economic balance for Jamaica, whereas Chinese are benefiting a lot from that because they're coming in to do the work. JC, good evening and welcome. One of the issues why so much is happening around us, we have become so complacent we're not demonstrating against the deadly disturbance that backside mining is causing in a lot of our communities in Jamaica. 
we're not demonstrating about our beaches. When government attack us, such as when the Prime Minister knocked down people's house at Clifton. The other day, the Prime Minister's wife uh, tried to bulldoze, start to bulldoze people's farm. It was said because they are People's National Party supporter after been farming on that land for over 38 years. What's the end result to all of this malarkey that has been going on in our government, particularly since 2020? What is our option before a general election? The power of the people. The power of the people matters. It sends a message and a signal to government. It disrupts their economic prospect and outlook. It does not look good for them on the international scene. But when you all just relax like nothing is happening, then they can get away with keep on nudging, nudging further at you. Now look at this public fiasco that took place in the parliament. They refused to correct the issue and refused to correct it publicly. Edmund Bartlett said it's too sensitive of an issue to discuss in the House of Parliament. Given that, the Speaker of the House published a letter to the entire Parliament without Mrs. Curtis's knowledge and before Ms. Curtis have time to acknowledge or respond to her complaints or her allegation. Juliet Holness failed also to go through a proper complaint procedure if she has an issue with Miss Curtis's role or competency. Knowingly or unknowingly, she took it onto herself to apply the discipline. Was it doing her role or was it to save her skin? It turned out to save in skin of skins because Juliet had tried to save their skin because she, a protect Nigel, all along by holding on to the report. When if that report was published in time, it could have done serious political damage at the poll to Don Nigel and the Jamaica Labour Party by extension. So in that, it was political expedience because they want to keep the narrative on their side. But they went on to lie about it. They went on to lie about it. They went on to brand Mr. Golden as a liar when he spoke about the report. And therefore, we went into a tumble by seeking to frame Pamela Monroe Ellis which I think she stood up to her by returning the report untouched. That did not succeed. She went on a public attack on the clerk of the house. Even if Juliet Holness have an issue with Miss Curtis's job, then it's for Miss Holness to make a complaint to the head of the civil service. The head of the civil service would then carry out an investigation 
And if there's a disciplinary hearing to be had, then they would be in jurisdiction to do so. Not Juliet Holness writing out of anger and petulance. This is one of the myths in our parliament. Everything is done on the whimsical level. It's all done on the whimsical level. My pain on my sleeve. My projected pain. So everything they do, there's emotion attached to it. There's no independence or critical thinking attached to what they do because the job is about their personal emotions and ambitions. So if I have to lie to you or if I have to kill one of you to protect myself, or politicians in Jamaica are willing to do so, because none of them want to be held accountable. It is why no member of the ruling party at the moment signed the code of conduct. That means they are blatantly saying to us, I cannot guarantee you I cannot guarantee you that I will have integrity in the role that you have signed me. This is where we're at. Having a new appointment doesn't solve the current problem. We still need, we know Ms. Curtis was going to resign. However, situation happen which we are of the view a lot of us some people rather are are of the view that miss curtis was hastily pushed because of the public disgraceful debacle that's been unfolding around her in the twilight of an outstanding career Miss Curtis shouldn't have gone under this shadow. There should have been public correction and public apology. The problem is there's, not a, there's no accountability framework in our country. None whatsoever. That's why they can take with on butter ball and plating as them feel like. That's why police in Jamaica don't have to apply the law where if Higler are selling at the wrong area, you ticket them. No. Our Jamaica authority just walk in with a sledgehammer and just do over your things them. But look how much politicians have stolen. And we can't even get an investigation. We can't even get a police investigation on them. We can't even get a proper integrity commission report on them. This prime minister has been walking and hiding wealth or dodging the declaration of him wealth. Because the prime minister, you and I, know a lot of it is ill-gotten. It is the very reason why you are not able to provide to substantiate what you have filed in order for it to be certified. You cannot substantiate those assets.
and wealth that you are submitting for about three years now. We can fairly say criminal activities when you were at the Ministry of Education. And we can also say criminality in the office of the Prime Minister. Taunt amount of money is missing from your office. I wonder if any of those money flipped off or fallen into the wealth that you cannot give an account for. Imagine the whoop of money won a thief. It did spend time with hospital and with police stations and with school. Maybe rain would and just fall out of door only. Anybody having to interact with this over time will develop serious mental health and sleeping issues. So even though they claim to sin, then provide sleeping facility for our police officers. They must sleep with them eye and them ears open. I listen to when rain and fall in them room. It's no different to the hospitals either. Where water will just break loose far up there, so just about anywhere. But Jamaica people don't see the need to stand up. We're not going to lose every bit of that land called Jamaica, you know. Because the rich investors and the Westerners, them want it. They must, sorry, say, them never hold on to Jamaica as a territory like Cayman and others where them still have direct um involvement in her but we can't continue like this jamaicans we have to start standing up and when i say standing up i'm talking about those of you at home we're not saying you need to go there and be violent look at how when saint lucia was demonstrating about their beaches about their beach the other day it was a very party atmosphere. The people of Barbados go and assemble themselves where the issue is, and they give their position to the government. People power is very, very important. It is the only saving grace for a downtrodden people. It is what our ancestors used to get people like us who stand on their shoulder and don't afraid to speak. Those people weren't standing up. Where do you think we would all be today? If all our ancestors just become complacent in the chainsaw and pan the plantation, Chain hand and feet. What do you think would happen to us if they just submit themselves to what the circumstances was then? What it means, it means that the fight continues. Every generation has to take on the battle. 
from their own perspective. It has never been over. The war has never declared ended. We have not signed a peace treaty with them. We are still at war with Western forces and influence. And the most we can do, Jamaicans and black people, act as if we're in a state of war. Don't get deceived by these nice words and nice phrases that they use. We are still at war. Always have that in the back of your head. Wherever we are, Westerners continue to attack or land or influence on our credibility. Our governments are aiding them to do so. <clears throat> Why am I not confident of the Magnitsky being used against our corrupt politicians in Jamaica? The main reason for corruption in Jamaica and across the Caribbean is United States involvement. So if there's really a hardcore investigation to go down and a lot of these Jamaican politicians, a lot of U.S. officials would get drugged into it as well. So I'm not confident that the State Department is going to, in great hurry, to use the magnet scab against Jamaican corrupt politician Maxine Cummings because they're held deep in the corruption Majority of the corruption created in Jamaica is done under the hegemon of the U.S. The same United States that is using Jamaica and CARICOM to front its assault and Haiti. It's the same criminal President Biden and his criminal son, Pauline Dixon. Because these people put in Trump on trial, Biden is the one that really, the Bidens and the Clintons, the Bidens and the Clintons who've committed state crimes against people, beat and teach, well gone, are the ones to be really be in front of the court. The Bidens and the Clintons. This same Joe Biden that is pushing Jamaica to carry out an onslaught on Haiti is still sending deportation flight to Haiti. This same criminal who wants to go there with intervention. Now, is this not a, viol not a violation of international law where you're sending people back into a situation where they can lose their life in a matter of time, in a war zone. You're deporting people into a zone where you are asking military from another country, thiefing, wicked, criminal Joe Biden. And you at the moment is still supporting deportation to Haiti. Criminal, make it make sense, Joe Biden. You and your son should be on trial, not Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton should be on trial. Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton need to come tell about the money where them collect and the struggle of Haiti. Bill and Hillary Clinton and the American state need to come tell we the almost hundreds a picnic with them lift up out of Haiti during the earthquake. What will not do with them? Give we a report upon them, not pedophiles. Give we a report upon them. Someone who have pursued Trump to justice, a one of the criminal who should have been really up in front of the head trying for war crimes. When I say Trump they didn't have to fight no war for kill no woman and children. Look how much women and children Biden killed 
in a Palestine and Ukraine since him come in. Me nah side against Trump for none of them. Trump tell with more of them dirty secret than we'd ever know. Those are the criminals that should be on trial. The Clintons. The Clintons who destroy Haiti rice crop. And I mean, sister, so Bill Clinton did cry in front of the world and tell us to apologize to mash up the Haiti economy. And the same Bill Clinton and him thiefing lizard of a wife who went back into Haiti after, um, after the hurricane, collect all them could collect and props them up. And airlift children out of Haiti where we can't hear anything about. Those are the criminals that should be on trial. So the criminal Joe Biden. We're aid Jamaica, Donnett Hamilton. Good evening and welcome. If you go kill other black people, this is the same Joe Biden that is deporting Haitians. Hmm? That is sending deportation flight to Haiti still. But who is fronting it? The Jamaican criminal. The Jamaican criminal is fronting it. The criminal in Jamaica that cannot get crime under control. The criminal in Jamaica that has not implemented a worthwhile crime policy in eight years. The criminal in Jamaica that has no time to pay attention to 100 day promises. Yes, that criminal is fronting the U.S. onslaught. Licky, licky, Andrew. This same criminal is fronting the onslaught on another black country. While you, Holness and Harris Trump, are deport them back without due process. And the U.S. has sent them back directly into the war zone. Make it make sense. So we we'll go there for. How Jamaica come into the point where Jamaica protect U.S. foreign interests? How did we get there, Jamaica? That you want to go into another country to protect U.S. foreign interests when you can't get a grip on crime in Westmoreland and Montego and St. James? Does it really make sense? I mean, I see no mothers and fathers out there to unconstitutionally wholeness ascend them picnic to them debt. How no gone so cold. Hmm? Them soldiers with wholeness and America ascend to them debt. Them not have no family. Hmm? A earth a woodworm them burn out. Huh? Because them your soldier with the US State. And the Jamaican puppet is sending to their death. Them not have no family or no community. No baby mother, no children. Or is the state of Jamaica saying they agree with the Prime Minister of Jamaica carrying out an American onslaught on Haiti when America cannot assist us in the crime fighting, in the crime swelter that Jamaica is. None of them something that makes sense to no? So if America says we're going to attack up a maroon town, wholeness ready a long time, my youth, it's, it will be a showdown. It will be a showdown, my youth. Remember that it will be a showdown. And don't think to say you're going to get away with these blood. The minute you put Jamaicans on Haiti style, you know how it go. You've declared a war on another country illegally. 
what you're doing in international law is illegal. The UN mandate will not go after it, an American mandate. Michelle Johnson, good evening and welcome. It's an American mandate. That's why we don't want to send in police. Here the police will understand them thoroughly. Can't deal with the issue. One minute we don't want to send in police for Kenya, no want to send in military for carry from Go on. But if the state of Jamaica is not in agreement with their prime minister, then they need to push back. Jamaica has been used as a proxy. Jamaica has been used as a proxy to fight America's war. How can Jamaica want to intervene in another country? When the crime rate in Jamaica is tantamount to the uh, um, murder rate in Jamaica is tantamount to the death toll in war or civil war um, environment. But your prime minister and Joe Biden, who's sending back people to their debt, is saying, go back there. We are come to come help you. Go on back. You no know, can't get no help here, so we're busy. I look after if you come help on our desk. So so you now have to go on, go sit down and wait till we come. We soon come. We just have gather them, gather them, gather them. Hmm? And we will come there. Come look at our town and help on our desk. So. No, no, we are going to make sense too. No? But then again, the military family of Jamaica are silent, tone deaf silent, like them not here from the whole of this thing start. I don't see one of the military family act like the government has sent them loved ones to them death. Whenever here Jamaica, Jamaica soldier them can manage Jamaican gangs them. Hmm? And you are sending them go Haiti. Good luck. I might as well also say farewell too. Kind of thing if you are going to get sympathy round here. If you think I'm going to run up in a people yard. Go war with them and get dust out. And you're going to get sympathy around here, so try Miss Lucia. You may be much luckier over there. I want to thank you all for being on the Drive Time London. Continue to call for the resignation of Juliet. Continue to call for an apology publicly for Miss Curtis. Continue to call for a retraction of the letter. Miss Curtis should not have gone under such a shadow. And Miss Curtis should not have retired with this debacle lingering over her. After such a successful lifetime career in our parliament, this should have never happened. And this is wrong to the core. Thank you very much. Meet us back here this evening on the people's point of view, where we will look at the day's development for the day. John Q, good evening and welcome, Derek Gordon. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. If you have just joined, Donet Hamilton, good evening. But as always, you can always watch the program from the top. 
And join us back here this evening when we will continue to look at the day's development in our country. Thank you very much and good afternoon from Global Television.